Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 44 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, Cloud Computing Recruitment Specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. This week we're excited to have back on our show as a special guest Ron Batra. Ron is an executive architect, technology innovator and strategist in IoT, cloud and digital transformation. Transformation. In this week's show, we'll be talking about the Internet of Things is about to undergo a radical change, which is fueled by a vast number of things, coupled with an almost pervasive presence of AI. The Internet of Things today encompasses a long list of vertical markets, all of them connected to the Internet, but not necessarily to each other. Hi, Dave and Ron. A warm welcome to you both. It's exciting to have you both back on the training show. And welcome back, Ron. It's great to have you back. Thank you, Brad. My pleasure. I look forward to the show. And it's always great to be here. Great to have Ron on. Yeah, it truly is. It truly is. Thanks, Ron. For saying, thank you so much for your time and, and being a part of the three shows this week. It's absolutely awesome. So, look, I've got an opening question for you, Dave, to kick the show off. And, uh, you know, will the integration of IoT require a new set of talents, uh, do you think? Yeah, I think it will. I mean, uh, one of the things that uh, I think we have kind of a convergence of right now, IoT is a very complex you know, kind of set of technologies. It's about data, it's about sensors, it's about low power networks, it's about, um, you know, connectivity and, uh, and uh, um, you know, database design and the ability to deal with predictive analytics and real-time analytics and control systems and things like that. And then that complexity married with kind of the emerging world of AI, including machine learning and deep learning, things like that, I don't know too many people out there with the, probably the perhaps the, the exception of Ron who's on the show who has a job um, who will um, you know be able to go off and really kind of solve those problems. So we have a training deficit right now trying to figure out who's going to train folks in those areas and you know really who's going to take it on. I mean, we think of something like cloud computing, I could probably put together you know, um, a dozen classes that'll kind of be relevant to get people off the ground in terms of understanding what cloud is and how to administrate it and ops and, you know, all these other things that are aspects of cloud. When you think of IoT, you're dealing with, um, you know, 10 factorial of technologies and then add that to the AI capabilities and the database capabilities. It's just almost impossible really to put together a set of courses and a set of, you uh, um, training, uh, you know, processes, you know, to get people up to speed on what's going on. And so unless we have the autodidacts out there, they're able to learn, you know, as they go. And there's lots of people out there that can do that. And I think that's the desirable thing. But the people who have the deep skills, who need the certification, who also have, you know, cloud skills, IoT skills and security skills and now AI skills, um, the challenge in training people up and getting people up to speed and the amount of time it's going to take and the time it's going to take that we're going to need them uh, is almost an impossible task, and it's probably at a uh, at a crisis right now. So, what do you think, Ron? Um, I'm uh, I echo what you said, David. The the amount of technology is really quite a bit. I mean, there's control systems, there's low power networks, there is the influence of machine learning, and you also have the traditional integration. You know, I mean, it's not just database design; it's also messaging. It's also deciding what messages go to the cloud, how to handle real-time streams of data, different types of data. Not all data is structured, not all data is text, some of it is video. So when you look at that, all of these are almost technology verticals if you really look at it. So how do we solve this as an, as a, as an industry? Well, one way is that one has to look at your place in the ecosystem. I am a company that makes turbines. I am going to IoT enable my turbine, which means I as a company am responsible for device communications and I will be able to expose my data points through an API that any system can grab through MQTT or whatever the protocol may be. So now what that means is the turbine company, maybe the turbine company's job is to focus on the best turbine and focusing on the elements that can be released to an IoT system. Picking it up from there, from the edge to the cloud, there's a different set of technologies. And maybe when you talk of edge to cloud, machine learning will run on the edge. So that maybe the companies who are making edge software, they should make they should make the best edge software with machine learning and an element of artificial intelligence on the edge. So now you need you need 
one class of skills has already gone to the manufacturer, the device programming and the, uh, you know, the compiled code and the thing that the code that goes into deep internals and sensors of the machine. Let, let the manufacturer do that. That's the OT side of the house. IT side of the house, you can again break it into cloud competencies and then add some messaging and machine learning competencies. If somebody knows how to provision cloud resources, somebody knows how to get data to the cloud, then the people who did SOA back in the day and the people who used to do um, message, I think those are the people that are gonna pivot the easiest to this architecture. They may have to add some elements of machine learning. Does not mean they have to write the algorithm. It just means they have to know how to implement machine learning at the edge to control the amount of data going into the cloud. Yeah, yeah that makes that makes sense. Uh, so going forward, you know, what would your what would your advice be in terms of how we can train people? Is this matter just on the job training and hiring smart people that we can, you know, train as we go, or is there any kind of formal training that we can start pointing people to? And if you know, if so, where can we find it? I, I just find there's a huge lack of uh, skilled training out there in the IoT space. There's a huge amount in the cloud computing space, and we talked about this on the show. But as far as IoT stuff goes, it's just so specific to the technology and the use case. Um, and when I work on it, you know, there's no two projects are gonna, that are going to be the same or even similar patterns. You know, therefore, it's very difficult to train people and make it happen. Should we just give up on it and you know, kind of uh, move on with on-the-job training and learning as we go? And that's kind of the way I learn. I'm sure you learn as well. Or, are we going to have some kind of a formal training that we can get people involved in? So I, I believe that we should not give up at all. I do believe on-the-job training is here to stay and that will stay. But I do, do believe we can make that on-the-job training a little bit easier by supplementing it. Just like there is a, you know, we, back in the day when SOA came out and before that you had messaging architectures, people didn't know how to do PubSub, right? I remember people going from one messaging vendor to the other and they would go in from one company to the other and, and train the train their people, train the trainer kind of a thing. So I believe an IoT masterclass, well, not even call it a masterclass, I think four or five courses of IoT would do it. You know, you cover the communications aspect at a high level, then you cover the elements of why do you have an edge software? What is the purpose of that? And then how does data go into the cloud? And teach a little bit about business rules and orchestration. I think four to five courses can do it, David. When are you coming up with those courses, David? <laughs> well, I mean, I, if someone would tell me, if someone would tell me what to come up with, I think I could, I could do it. But it's just, uh, I think what you're saying is actually, actually makes sense. So let's have a base set of services, um, a base set of classes where we're talking about, you know, maybe the, you know, uh, six core things in terms of IoT communications, you know, data, uh, data acquisition, data retention, data analytics. Uh, and then kind of break those down into additional courses and additional courses, and then the actual detailed um, implementation of the technology, let the vendors, you know, in essence, handle those. And I kind of dig that. I, I kind of, uh, you know, like where you're coming from on that. I, I just think that it's going to be, um, it's going to be a bit of a struggle, you know, to try to get people to understand exactly what training path they need to make. And, and I think if you're going to map yourself out through those courses, you know, unlike cloud computing and database design and things like that, that are, you know, dare I say, it's more traditional. You know, it's going to be a very, it's going to be a very confusing thing to do. And I, I think you got it. I think though. So, if we're going to look for, you know, training capabilities, things like that, um, shouldn't we get leadership from the IoT companies that are out there, the, the people who are making the money and selling these IoT sensors and databases and things like that? And it's, it's obviously a, a many billion dollar industry. Should they be telling us how to train people or should we be telling them how we're going to train people to leverage their technology? I, I really think that IoT is really a system integration effort if you really look at it at the highest level. And what I mean by that is do I see the cloud companies wanting to provide that training or do I see the manufacturers of devices or do I see system integrators wanting to do that? I believe it's a little bit of both. There is no fixed answer. The cloud companies certainly do tell you how to pick up data from the edge through different networks and to send it to the cloud. And once it's in the cloud, how to keep it at rest, how to analyze it, how to do maintenance on the data, how to archive it and how to do predictive analytics. They do all of that today. So IoT is 
So the cloud guys do that. Well, the device guys also have to do a little bit of that, and the system integrator could step in and bridge that. Okay, well, system integrator or vendor, do you think it's gonna be a combination of the two? And are there any consortiums out there that, I mean, last time I looked, there was three or four different consortiums of uh, providers out there. Are there any ones that we should follow, standards committees, you know, things like that, that are kind of leading the way in terms of how we should be trained? You know, for example, uh, the computer uh, cloud security alliance kind of dictates the way in which we're training people around cloud security, or at least suggesting a path to cloud security. Should the um, consortiums out there be taking the leadership, or I mean, that's been hugely unsuccessful in the past. But you know, are they going to have a chance at being success successful going forward? So the cloud security alliance, IEEE, do have some efforts in that process. There have been a few other associations. Uh, I, IoT forums, but they have been more focused on use cases. So I have not seen them. I have not seen a, a rigorous uh, what you call distillation of knowledge coming out of those forums yet. I would say that IEEE and the cybersecurity alliances are probably higher, but then their focus is still on the security aspect. So we're going to, in essence, uh, we're kind of on our own and doing the training. It's probably going to emerge from best practices probably going to emerge from successes of others. Um, but there's going to be no one dictator, you know, one group that's dictating how training needs to occur or pass to do training. What about college universities? Are we going to, I just uh, read uh, today that Purdue is offering a cloud computing uh, degree. Um, so you can go and get a computer science degree and minor in cloud computing, which I think is great. Are we going to see the same thing in IoT or any university starting to move in that direction? Or is it just one of those too complex things to deal with where they're not necessarily going to touch it. So I believe academia is probably the best way to see young minds. I will, I definitely see that ha happening. But what I also see happening is something unique that in academia, you will find that a lot of devices and test equipment will be IoT enabled. It's just that depending upon what your engineering curriculum is, you may be using an IoT device without even knowing it. So. I'm talking. I'm taking taking you taking us out of the realm of computer science and computing, but say other type of measurement electrical systems. They might be out now. That doesn't solve our problem. You know, coming back to our problem, I think I'm digressing a little bit. Yes, there's a reason today why cloud computing is becoming mainstream. If you are a young company starting out, the chances of finding developers who are out of college who have done on-premise computing is becoming progressively smaller. So when you apply that analogy that everybody who comes out of college is used to spinning up a VM, the same analogy applied that now they're used to spinning up an IoT device. They used to talk to do an IoT device. That would be the best area, David. That would be the best place to train to, to train people. Practitioners coming out of college, they have one more skill in their toolkit, which is IoT enablement. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that's that's smart advice. Brad, do you have any questions? Yeah, just firstly, thanks, guys. This this show is very, 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 very good, and, and certainly would uh, open many, many eyes with regards to the the pain points of IoT and the training, uh, and, and whether it's going to be an in-house training or a vendor-led training, or you know, within the organisation. And I just wanted to touch on what Ron said. Actually, you know, going back is that it is very much led by the outputs of what the organisation needs, isn't it, Ron? So, I mean, you know, ideally you want to get the core skills in there of the people that have got all the core skills to, to what the outputs are expected of the organization and then almost tailor make that training for that particular project or at least towards getting the outcome of what that project needs to be, right? Absolutely, uh, Brad. I mean, one has to look at the history of the past, the last 10 to 15 years of computing. We had programmers who were proficient in Java, and then there were programmers who were proficient in Windows, and all twain did not talk to each other, right? But then there were people who were specialized, specialists in reporting systems, and there were people who were specialized in data warehousing and ETL. Progressively, as people grew, they were they were learned to bleed into each other. And with cloud, that that learning has happened even more because you're not, you're provisioning services, you don't have to get everything from scratch, right? So I, I, I'm, I, I resonate with that. Having said that, there are subtle differences between every IoT platform, and a skilled practitioner should be able to pick up those, but it depends what his or her career path might be. You know? 
So, so, so I, I, I'm, I'm 21, say, and I'm not, but I'm 21 and I'm out of college. And I would say that I want to do five IoT projects, two with Microsoft, one with Azure, one with AWS, one with somebody else. If I keep that my focus, within five years, I could be having the 10,000 hours of programming and become an expert in that. So it depends on a case-by-case basis. Yeah, absolutely. It's very bespoke to each each particular project and outcome, isn't it? And just to put some figures around that as well is that Cisco uh, have estimated that there's 30 billion devices that are going to be connected to the internet by 2020, but by 2030, that number has pro- been projected to increase to 500 billion. So that IT training, uh, the IoT training, is, uh, has really got to catch up in the next uh, what 12 years, what 11 years or so. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and I think we're going to see uh, probably some damage done because of the lack of training uh, going forward. So the next five years, I'll go ahead and make a prediction. We're going to have some larger hacks that aren't going to be, you know, gained access through the big cloud providers, things like that. But it's going to be a device um, that is programmed to attack internally, things like just because there's so many holes and you know uh, lack of discipline and kind of setting these things up. And I think we just think we need more talent to make it happen. So I always advise people that IoT is a great technology, you know, should leverage it. It's going to make you a lot of money, but proceed cautiously. Make sure you're dealing with security and governance as part of it. So what do you think? What do you think, Ron? I absolutely agree. The when I talked about SQL injection, IoT injection, <laughs> I hope there is not a term we talk about two years from now and say say that somebody went up on a light pole took a piece of code, took out the light bulb and stuck the code in there. And before you realize the whole grid went down, I hope we don't see a situation like that. So those are the things that keep me up at night and IoT injection in the worst form coming from a physical outlet, you know, that can happen. Yeah, I'm going to go buy a generator. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, look, you're absolutely right. And it's been a great show, guys. And, and I think that the IoT and, and the way we're embracing it and as a consumer, and I think it's very much a, a consumer-led organization and, and what our expectations are from the, the convenience of IoT and, and how it's you know, become a, a part of our DNA with regards to our day-to-day life you know, in, in so many ways that we take for granted now. Like we mentioned earlier, the connectivity to Fitbits and uh, smart watches and that sort of thing, uh, and you know, uh, and like you said, Ron, you know, it's it's, you know, you can have the most protected organization within the cloud, but if the wrong piece of code gets into a, a a smart light bulb, for argument's sake, it could infect and you know take down the electricity grid. As an extreme, obviously, that is a, an extreme example, but it at least black out a street or something. So you know, it's it. it for the convenience it does make us quite vulnerable until we have those skill sets and training there and i think it's uh it's great to have you on the show ron because it highlights so many different parts of the internet of things and how great it is and how industry and consumers embrace it but equally how vulnerable how vulnerable it makes us all as well so ron thank you so much for being part of the show it's great to have you back thank you brad my pleasure thank you david my pleasure great talking to you both Thanks, Dave. It's great having you on the show as always. Always a pleasure. Thanks to Ron. Appreciate you making the time. (laughs) Absolutely. And thanks, everyone, for watching. Apologies. I've got a bit of a cold at the moment, so a bit clogged up. I do apologize. Uh, If you want to mute my voice at any point, that's fine. So I've left David and Ron to do most of the most of the talking this week, which is great. And you can get us all on social media. So Dave's on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard and Ron at Ron Batra. All the links will be in the description box below. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment and share these videos with your friends and your colleagues and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. And yeah, we're all over social media as well. So come and connect with us on uh, LinkedIn, on Instagram and Facebook. Be great there to join our team and and reach out. It'd be awesome. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and until next week.